Hey, what's up, YouTube? Just up here in Flagstaff, picking up some more solar equipment. Hopefully you can see Snowball behind me there. So it gave me an idea for another video. There's a little bit, a few patches of snow on the ground. It's only like 47 degrees up here, so it's not terribly cold. But it gave me a good idea for uh, winter camping in an RV. So uh, let's head back to Phoenix and uh, get to it since that's where my trailer's at. So we're back here in Phoenix in the trailer and we're talking winter camping in an RV. So I like to go camping a lot of times for my birthday which is in December. I go up to northern Arizona and uh, sometimes I go camping in February and March so it gets kind of cold in northern Arizona. It's um, some of my camping trips uh, during the day have been mid to low 30s and at night it gets to like mid teens like 15 17 degrees so it's fairly chilly so there's things on my trailer that I've noticed that I needed to take care of to make it more comfortable and more tolerable to go camping because I still want to go camping when it's cold so uh, I'm gonna take you through it and uh, show you things that I have had to do in order to make it more comfortable. Right now we're in the dinette area and that's where we're going to start. We're going to start right in here. So this wall right here, this is, I don't know, an inch thick or whatever. And this is the front storage compartment. And this let a lot of cold in. So um, when I would be sitting here, I, I like to sit in this spot right here since the TV is right there. And I like to watch movies from right here. So there was a lot of cold coming in from here. I would get really cold. So I drilled some holes from the backside and I uh, pumped in several can cans of uh, great stuff and to try and fill the void in here and also seal the air leaks because I also noticed that there was some air, air, air drafts coming in. So along this backside in the corner here, right along here, there was, I, I could actually feel a draft coming in. So there was actually air coming in there and all along the bottom edge. So uh, I'll get you closer up and uh, I will show you that right now. Okay, so what I've done here is I've taken the seat cushion off and the wood so that I can show you underneath the dinette or underneath the seat. There's a storage compartment underneath here, but that's the front storage area that's right beyond this wall here so right underneath there you can see how big of a gap there was before I filled that foam in and that, that was a big air leak right there there was a hole there that's why there's a bit of a mess coming in there so there was foam coming in there because that's where one of the wires did come through and I ended up moving it down lower just to make it a little bit neater clean it up a little bit so I actually changed out the outlet box as well because it had an RV outlet so back on this edge back in here you can see some of the foam that I tried to clean up because it came in because that was another source of an air leak right there in that corner. So along this edge right here, I also right in, right in here, I tried to get some foam in from the bottom side. It didn't end up pushing up through here, but uh, I did get some foam in there because it was, there was definitely air draft coming in along there as well. Okay, so this is one of the outside storage compartments 
on the front side of the trailer. We're on the left front. We're right outside that seat from the dinette. Here's one of the holes that I drilled. And yes, it looks ugly, but it's on the inside, so nobody sees it, so who cares? And uh, so let's see how well you'll be able to see. I'm trying to hold the camera in there and hope that it's actually getting the shot. Here's the foam on the inside edge. And going up to the top edge where I tried to get some foam in. And along the edge where that carpet is. So I got as much foam in there as I could get. To try and seal up the leaks and insulate it better. So that's the inside of one of the compartments. Okay, now we're on the very front uh, front storage compartment. This is where the propane tanks are, the batteries, and what else have you. That's that outlet. This is the back side of it. Foamed all around it and filled it up to try and keep the air leaks out. There's another one of those holes up in here. Right there. where I drilled a hole to pump in some foam. There's another one. I drilled several of them and kept hitting something solid and I'm guessing that's what the dinette attaches to and that's why I kept hitting something solid. It's kind of wide because there's my hand and just kept hitting something solid all across there until I hit the void over there. There's another one of my holes. It, the foam came out and swelled up really bad and I tried to cut it open and clean the foam out and this is how I tried to seal it back up. Looks terrible but again it's in a storage compartment can't see it. There's the outside of that hole where the wires went in originally and then I ended up relocating them down here. Uh, it's not going in focus. You get the idea. But down in there, that's where they, they ended up going now. And there's some, there's another hole back in there. I think there's another, yeah, there's another one way up in there. So, all right, back to the inside of the trailer. We're back inside. Let's uh, talk about the heater. So here's where the heater, the main heater is. It's right by the bathroom door. Kitchen, just trying to give you an idea. Dinette, all the way over there. So that's where the main heater is. There is a duct coming out into the bathroom. It also had another duct running along underneath these cabinets and coming out right here next to the door. So what I ended up doing, let's open it up down here. All right, let's open it up down here. This is underneath the stove to the side of the heater. Get some light under there. So one of the things, you can see some more great stuff in there. So if you see this huge piece of foam right here, or not huge piece, it's probably one by one, 10 by 10, something like that. Uh, that was just open. That was completely open to the outside, which let in a lot of cold and actually, we can take this guy off, and you can actually see the side of the heater. So there's the side of the heater in there. And that's actually back in there, if you see those vents behind that duct, that's actually where it draws air in. 
So if you think about it, as it's drawing air in from the side, it's actually drawing a whole bunch of cold air right through this hole up into the trailer and then trying to heat that. So one of the things I wanted to do was seal up this hole. This is actually has access to the top edge of the freshwater tank. Because you can see this is the fill hose and then this is the freshwater line going to the pump. Coming from the tank going to the pump. So that was uh, a large hole and it's actually uh, just the top edge so it was completely open on the side of it. So I wanted to close up that hole but one of the things I also did you can see that this, that's actually the, new, the, heat, the heating duct now. Instead of running across going that way to that vent over by the front door, that now goes out the bottom of the trailer into um, insulated ductwork and runs along the bottom edge, runs along the bottom of the trailer and then comes around and comes up right here through the floor. So I was able to find one of these vents on Amazon. So it closes. I usually do that to keep crap out of it. it. Opens up, but it also pops up. So if you close the louvers on top, pop it up like that, it'll actually angle out and come this way out like this. And since I'm usually sitting at the dinette, this is perfect. There's a lot of uh, it, hot air coming in from here. It does take a minute to warm up because, I mean, it's running out the bottom of the trailer, so it does get kind of cold. Unfortunately, it takes a minute to heat up. And with it running that far, I did end up putting a 12 volt booster fan right in line with it. So that helped. I have, I also installed a delay so that that fan doesn't come on immediately so that the air has a minute to heat uh, to time to heat up and I spliced it right off from the fan of the main heater so when the heater kicks on the fan kicks on it also runs the other fan via that delay I had a speed control hooked up in there, but I found that it needed to, that I wanted it on full blast anyway. So that it, so I just took it out. So let's go to the bottom side of the trailer and I can show you what I did underneath there because the fresh water line would freeze up. And then my pump would kick on in the middle of the night because it's trying to build pressure, but it can't draw any water. So the, the tank wouldn't freeze, but just the, the fresh water line did. And also the drain line in the bottom of the tank froze up and started leaking. Not a big leak, but it was still a leak and that was due to it freezing. So I will show you what I did to the bottom side. All right, so we are on the bottom side of the trailer. And the mess you're looking at in front of you is what was the freshwater tank. So that was definitely interesting. I used like 10 cans of great stuff to try and insulate the entire thing. I ended up using window screen and stapling it to the bottom and then just uh, cutting holes in it periodically, shoving a tube in there and pumping all the great stuff in there. It looks terrible, but it ended up working. I got, I also got a heater that's uh, dual voltage. It works off from 12 volt batteries, but it also will work off from 120 volt. And it's like a big sticker, and I stuck that to the bottom of the tank as well. But uh, it doesn't seem that I've needed to use it. Just uh, doing this, seem to do the trick. I mean, it, it was more than sufficient. I haven't had any issues with it. And I've been camping down to the teens and haven't had any issues of it uh, freezing up. And the, the drain line used to stick straight out the bottom. And I changed it and put a 90 degree in there. 
and uh, so that I can actually get to it easier to drain it. And over here on this side that you're looking at over here, that's where the lines actually come out. So this is the side of the trailer right here. This is where the axles are, two tires. And this is where I ended up relocating the drain. I brought the drain right out right here so that I can easily reach it and just turn the water on and off, or I mean turn the, drain the freshwater tank from right here. It makes it a whole lot easier because I couldn't really reach it from uh, where it was before tucked up underneath there. And now it's insulated in that foam. If you see that corrugated stuff around it, that's how I initially tried to insulate the drain line. Was so I wrapped that around there and then I just put great stuff inside of that. But then I ended up just covering the entire tank with great stuff. And here is this little enclosure right here. This is where the heating duct runs along the bottom side of the trailer. And I want to say that somewhere in here, that's where the uh, booster pump is. And let's spin around. And then it runs across the front up to the middle of the trailer. And then I filled the end of it in with more great stuff because it's just sheet metal that that duct was. Took me a minute to find that duct piece because it's sheet metal and it, uh, it has the vent going up like that, but it has a four inch inlet coming in from the side like that and then it curves up like that and then it has the eight inch horizontally like that. And it actually was fairly difficult to find, but uh, I ended up finding it and that was on Amazon. That's actually, once I found it, that's what motivated me to do this whole thing. And I'm like, that's exactly what I want. I can do it now. So I ran four inch insulated duct along the bottom side of the trailer. You can actually see some of it right in here. Here's the back side of it. Looks just as messy. But great stuff does not want to stick when you're trying to do it on vertical or upside down surfaces. So when I came up with that screen, I was pretty excited and it worked exactly the way I wanted it to. But boy, this was messy. Got it over a few pairs of pants and it doesn't exactly come off once you do that. So that does it for So that does it for winter camping in an RV. Those are things that I've been able to learn. So that does it for winter camping in an RV. Those are things that I've had to take care of through trial and error and just being cold on a few of my trips. So uh, if you like the shirt, I will see if I can try and find the, the Amazon link and I'll put that into the description. Uh, I bought it off from Amazon like two years ago, so I don't know if it's still there. But if I find it, I will put it in the, in the description. Don't forget to like, subscribe, and share for more I Can Do It Myself videos.